If you're worried about malware or keyloggers, we'll show you some tools to keep your macOS computer safe on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you're worried about malware on your Mac computer, there are generally a couple of characteristics you can count on. Now, one is that a very common type of malware is a keylogger, which is something that taps into your system processes and listens for key events and then logs it to a file. Now, another thing you want to look for is persistent programs, meaning things that are always running in the background, because this is a characteristic of malware where maybe something is communicating with a command and control server and is listening for instructions, or even doing things like sending your screen captures so that somebody else can see what you're up to. Now, the final thing we'll learn to do is look through our system processes and find things that look suspicious and dig a little deeper to understand maybe they're unsigned, or maybe there's something else fishy with them that we want to explore. Now, in order to do this, you'll need a macOS computer, and you'll need to go to objective-c.com in order to see these great tools created by Patrick Wardle. You can also check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description if you have any trouble setting up, because you'll be able to get some help troubleshooting there as well. Once you have all that ready to go, then we can begin. It's not always practical to constantly be scanning for the latest virus and assume that you're always gonna be up to date on what the exact signature of the program looks like. Instead, sometimes it's better to, be, to focus on the behavior of malware rather than actually going after the individual program, which is why a lot of the tools that Patrick Wardle develops are really unique and cool. Now, objective-c.com is the website that Patrick Wardle keeps his tools on, and these are all free and really interesting ways of keeping your Mac more secure. And today we're going to go through a couple that I think are really useful if you suspect that there might be malware on your computer. Now the things we're going to be focusing on today are some characteristics of malicious programs that make them easy to find provided we have a program that allows us to take a deep dive into this kind of information on our computer. Now the first thing we're going to take a look at is persistent files. And this means things that start up every single time we open our computer. Now obviously in order to do a bunch of nefarious bad things in the background, the malware will need to be persistent. So we can take a look at one of our tools that we're going to cover to see whether or not there's a file that's installed that maybe keeps starting up every single time we log in. Now another thing we want to be able to do is examine any running programs that might be suspicious. And there's another tool we'll be checking out, which I can go into, we'll go to products. And first is going to be, uh, we're going to go to Task Explorer. So Task Explorer will allow us to examine whether or not files that are or programs that are running are actually maybe um, possessing some suspicious characteristics that would otherwise flag it if we could just see them overtly, such as being encrypted, being a packed file, meaning it's difficult for us to scan inside and see what they actually contain, or if they're connecting to a bunch of random domains that we don't want them to connect to. Now, finally, we're going to look at a type of uh, program that is particularly insidious called keyloggers. And we're going to use a, a program called Rekey in order to check and see if we have a keylogger installed on our system, which would basically be tapping into our system events and trying to listen in on whenever we're using the keyboard and maybe log our password so that somebody remotely could listen in. Now there are, as you can see, a bunch of different tools that Patrick Wordle has created, and we will be covering some of the other ones because I find them quite useful. But today we're going to focus on the ones that are especially useful for determining whether or not you have some malware installed on your device. Now let's start out with one that allows us to see things that are persistent. And here you can see Knock Knock allows us to see what's persistently installed on our Mac. When we click on learn more, we can see more information about this tool, including, I believe at the bottom, an FAQ that links to uh, not only an email where you can directly ask Patrick questions, but some more information about where you can find a write-up or other details about this. So let's go ahead and download this. And then once we have it downloaded, as you can see, uh, I actually support Patrick on Patreon and I recommend that you do as well. So since I already do, I'll click that. Um, I'm gonna click this to open it. And once we open that, we can see that these fine people support Patrick. Uh, we'll start a scan to take a look at what's installed on our computer. And once I expand this, you can see it's a nice kind of desktop view of all the different things that might be an issue on our computer. 
Now here we see browser extensions and you can see all of my <laughs> wonderful browser extensions. I've done another video on them. Uh, you can see cron jobs, which I have none, event rules, uh, extensions and widgets. And here you can see I have some Adobe stuff, um, kernel extensions, which might be something that we want to take a look into depending on whether or not we suspect there's something suspicious running, suspicious running in the kernel. Uh, here you can see that zero of the things that we've scanned were flagged with virus total, which is a really, really good sign because if something was flagged with virus total, we would definitely want to know. On launch items, we can see things that persistently start when we launch. Um, so that's going to be uh, some things like for encrypted email, user uh, update for Google, a VPN um, updating tool, and then some other things like library proxies, um, uh, login items, you can see there's a whole list here of different things that might present a security threat depending on whether or not we've authorized them or there are things that we want to have installed. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out of this one. And as you can see, this provides kind of an active monitoring tool for us to be able to see what exactly is installed on our computer and make decisions about whether or not we want it to stay there. Now the next tool we're going to be checking out is going to be a uh, task explorer. Here we go. So Task Explorer allows us to learn more information about the various things that are running our computer right now. And this is something that's useful for if we suspect maybe there's an active program that's running in the background and maybe it's doing something sketchy that we don't trust and we want to see exactly who's behind this file. Maybe we want to see if it's actually been signed or not. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and authenticate. And now we'll be able to see all the various things that are running on our computer. And also, oops, I'm gonna make this smaller. Uh, we'll also be able to see this in a tree view or a flat view, which kind of lets us know which uh, of our processes have been launched by what. Uh, I'm gonna go back to flat view. And here, if we wanna see, I can scroll down to look for something that might be flagged to be a little bit more suspicious. We have a lot of pretty normal looking stuff. And oh, here we go, something in red. So here we can see that this is encrypted and that could represent maybe a file that has portions of it that are otherwise inaccessible because they're a payload that hasn't been decrypted yet or something else sketchy could be going on if we don't know or trust this file. If I scroll through, I should also be able to find other things. Here we see some more encrypted things. Um, and if anything fails to be signed correctly, that should also be flagged as well. Now, if we identify a process of interest, for example, one of the encrypted ones we saw before, we can go ahead and click on it to get more information. And here we can see there's Tor is throwing a little flag and we're also getting here. So we can see files that are associated with the particular uh, process that we're curious about. We can click here and see different network connections that are being made by it. Uh, so this is all a different way where by clicking on the info section here, we can see more information like the hash, the size of the file, the time, the signature, who signed it, which might be important depending on whether or not uh, we're suspicious of a particular encrypted file. So all these things give us a tremendous amount of power and oversight into the things running on our macOS computer without requiring us to really know too much about you know, computer science or anything that would kind of create a barrier between us knowing whether or not a program's running on our computer without our knowledge. Here we can see exactly who signed it, when, uh, when it was running, what the hash is. So if there was something that just looked wildly suspicious here that was signed by itself or something else that was really just weird, we would be able to quickly identify it and be like, hey, something's going on here that we don't trust. Now beyond Task Explorer, we can get more uh, we can get more specific with what we're trying to find by using a different tool that looks for a specific type of malware. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to Rekey, and we can click on Download to install a basically a scanner to identify whether or not we have something tapping into our system events in a manner that would be consistent with monitoring software. Now I'm going to go ahead and install Rekey again, and you can see I installed it earlier. Uh, and once we have it, we'll be able to do a scan and see whether or not we have anything that qualifies as a keylogger on our computer. So we'll go ahead and start this at login. We'll run the icon and ignore Apple programs, which means that we won't have anything that Apple is running itself, tripping this and giving us any false positives. I'm going to go ahead and click close and then we can click on the top to access a scan, which will basically check to make sure there's nothing currently tapping into our system events. So we'll go ahead and hit scan. 
And just like that, we were able to determine that nothing was actively typing, uh, tapping into our system events, meaning that as far as this, as far as we know, there's no keylogger installed on this computer listening to our events. Now, if any of these things had yielded something suspicious, for example, if something had come up here, then we definitely would want to look into this further and make sure that there was no malware installed on our computer, because at that point we would have identified something we could bring to an expert and be like, hey, this looks like something actually is installed on my computer, tapping into my keys, and I want to know what it is and why it's there. While there is no silver bullet against malware, the tools in Objective-C were developed by Patrick Wordle, a reputable source and someone who goes around doing presentations on these tools. So if you want to check out exactly how they work, you can always tune into one of his presentations that breaks it down and gets into the head of the developer behind these things. Now another really interesting thing you can do is go to the GitHub page or look at the source code of these files because all of them actually have their source code available and you can inspect them to make sure they're actually doing what they say they're doing, which isn't something you can always do with commercial tools. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you're having any trouble with these tools, you can check out the Nullbyte article in the description to do any troubleshooting. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.